see what farming will look like. Farms will be protected by AI scarecrows. Potatoes will be genetically engineered to self-peel when cooked. And why are there greenhouses inside camouflaged shipping containers built by city rebels who do not wish to eat the food controlled and patented by megacorporations? And what kind of futuristic fish farms are being built underwater deep down in the ocean, a place less known to humans than outer space? Let's first travel to the open fields where farmers battle to protect their land. Welcome to the last harvest. Naturalist farmers continue to defend their natural ways of farming. They are fighting against government regulations, trying to shut them down to protect the environment. And they are also fighting the corporations that are patenting all things farming and are using genetically engineered crops. Most naturalist farmers have adapted to the changing times. They now employ robots. These are the robot harvesters. The robots work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and in all types of weather. Drones fly overhead, monitoring crops, inspecting robots, and counting livestock. Harvesting robots use cameras and color recognition technology to see when a strawberry is ready to be picked. There are automated cow milking machines. There are even AI scarecrows, equipped with ultrasonic emitters and lasers to repel insect pests. They use infrared cameras to work through the night. They also use sound and light to deter larger pests such as birds and rodents. These AI scarecrows update their tactics based on the observed behavior of the pests. When it comes to planting the crops, bioinjection drones are equipped with mechanisms to inject seeds directly into the ground from the air, minimizing soil disruption and eliminating the need for walking and driving paths between the crops. Even the solar panels on the farms are robotic, tracking and following the sun's movements during the day and year. But even with all the high-tech robots, the independent farmers can't compete with the big corporate harvesters. These corporations buy up all the land and use even more advanced technology, such as next-gen artificial intelligence that feeds on a farm's data through sensors and cameras, learning to predict crop yields and disease outbreaks. These corporations launch their own satellites to monitor their farms and even monitor the land of the independent farmers. Nanotechnology is used in the soil to monitor conditions, while nanoparticles deliver fertilizers and pesticides. Even out on these open farms, people question, where is the line between natural food and artificial? There is one line that natural farmers do not cross over into, and that is the line of using genetically altered food such as hypoallergenic nuts that have been genetically modified to eliminate allergenic proteins, or self-peeling potatoes, engineered with a skin that falls off naturally when cooked. Then there is color-guided harvesting. Vegetables or fruits are genetically altered to change the color of the leaf or even the skin just before ripening. Or crops can be genetically programmed to ripen at the same time. Strains of tomatoes are altered to switch off a protein that controls the ripening process. A second gene is modified to react to a non-toxic compound that is sprayed or added to the water, which switches on the ripening protein, starting the ripening process at the same time in every tomato. And then there is a new field of study with growing investments in the creation of hybrid plant-animal organisms. Plant and animal traits are genetically combined to create a tree that produces milk or a vine that grows meat. Corporations patent their genetic engineering and farming techniques, and some countries even allow them to patent natural seeds, making nature the intellectual property of corporations. Farmers are forced to buy the corporation's engineered seeds, seeds that have been modified to only use the company's own nutrients, fertilizers, and even water. The crops these seeds produce have also been engineered to not be able to produce more seeds that can be replanted. The corporations also work on reviving and patenting extinct species of food, such as ancient grape varieties, rice, and Roman wheat, and even extinct species of seafood grown in underwater farms. Looking down into the water, it's not just fish swimming around. There are also robot drones. Aquatic drones work on planting crops, placing larvae, cleaning shellfish, and harvesting the ocean crops. There are underwater caged fish farms and seaweed forests harvested for food and biofuel. 
while the floating algae farms produce the superfood spirulina. Clams, scallops, and mussels are grown over floating ropes. When it comes to growing marine food, there is no need for precious freshwater, and underwater farms are protected from the changing weather on the surface. Maintenance robots inspect underwater structures, nets, and equipment, while microplastic collection robots filter out plastic particles from the water. These underwater robots are built to be resistant to high pressure, low temperatures, and saltwater corrosion. The ocean is a challenging place to farm. Humans have had more success in sending machines such as rovers and satellites into space than they have in sending them to the deepest parts of the ocean. Some fishermen use fish drones to autonomously steer and herd their own school of fish, allowing the fish to be free-ranging but kept under control. These robotic fish shepherds also work as security escorts, using sound, light, and even holographic projections to protect the fish from predators and human poacher pirates. When it comes to powering large ocean farms, corporations are investing in harvesting geothermal energy from underwater volcanic vents, while smaller ocean farms are powered by floating solar fields and wind and wave energy generators, and algae is used to create biofuels. Deep in the Atlantic Ocean, corporate engineers are building an experimental underwater vertical farm. It is a multi-story underwater structure that harnesses energy from temperature gradients, producing electricity by using the temperature difference between deep and shallow waters in the ocean. The different levels of the underwater vertical farm provide different living conditions for a variety of edible marine species of plants and animals to grow. The underwater structure is given the name Neptune's Garden. Ocean engineers work on terraforming parts of the ocean near cities. They experiment with water conditioning, altering the water chemistry by introducing and removing specific chemicals, nutrients, and gases to create optimal conditions for growing certain marine organisms. Robots drill into the seabed and inject necessary nutrients and minerals, creating fertile zones. Seascaping becomes a branch of architecture and engineering, focusing on the design and construction of engineered underwater areas. Bio-3D printers are used to construct artificial reef structures, promoting the growth of algae, shellfish, and other marine life. Seabed sculpting robots reshape the ocean floor to create depressions, raised areas, and carve out seabed tunnels and channels to form new currents and waterways. Strong swimmers such as tuna prefer areas with consistent currents, and shellfish such as oysters, mussels, and clams that are filter feeders also benefit from the terraformed water currents. The value of the ocean is rising. Corporations begin to claim ownership as governments sell it to them. To maintain control, these corporations close down beaches and deny traditional fishing communities access to the waters. And then there is the controversial world of genetic engineering, where corporations modify the genetic code of marine life, making them grow faster and able to resist disease, the rising sea temperatures, and the acidification of the water. Even the taste of fish that nobody wants to eat is changed to be more flavorful and delicious. Schools of fish all look the same, as the fish are clones of each other, bred to be the same size, weight, and taste. And in a world where large marine creatures have been going extinct, genetic scientists have bioengineered new ones. Open waters are seeded with genetically modified, fast-growing, giant squid. Over time, they begin to show signs of advanced intelligence. There are a lot of fears fears that there are unknown threats to the environment that will come from the genetically engineered bio-waste produced by these new age farms. When will genetically engineered species start to outnumber natural animals? And what happens when everything is the same, creating a global mono-agriculture, a world without natural biodiversity and heavily dependent on technology. The doomsday theorists predict a day when an unknown threat could create a global domino effect of destruction. They call this future event the Cascade. Just outside of the cities, humanity rules over food production in towering biodome farms. Large, weather-controlled domes that completely control the internal climate, simulating any condition necessary for a variety of crops, and protecting the crops from the changing weather outside. There is no exchange of any matter, including air. 
Since the crops are harvested locally in urban areas, this avoids food disruptions because of geographical tensions and political extortions. These biodome farms supply the city's grocery stores and make deliveries to people's homes. Let's travel into the city centers where there are small city farms and government drones fly overhead, monitoring the air quality and noise pollution. The first skyscraper farm is celebrating its 20th anniversary. Standing in the center of city parks are giving trees. These are natural, organic Frankenstein creations. Branches from different fruit trees are cut and taped to an incision on a host tree. The branches and the host tree fuse together. It is a process called grafting. One tree can grow up to 40 different types of fruit. In the basements of restaurants, different types of microgreens are grown. These indoor farms use light recipes. The LED lights are programmed for specific frequency, intensity, and spectrum to grow each species of plant as efficiently as possible. The light recipe, the bioinformatics, can even change the color of the leaves, the shape, size, texture, and even the flavor. Some restaurants serve uniquely genetically engineered food, such as bioluminescent, glowing seafood. The people living in these cities can order home deliveries of this new age food. Oliver, a boy with multiple food allergies, opens a meal box from Nutrigene Foods. Each item in the box is custom grown and genetically altered to remove allergens, allowing him to enjoy worry-free meals. Some people choose to grow their own food in their own kitchens. A popular device is a table-sized CNC-like machine that works as an automated micro-home kitchen farming system. It can change tools to plant, water, maintain, and harvest the plants. It can plant different seeds on the platform, creating a map, and manage each seed with different nutrients, amounts of water, and lighting. Some people have micro tabletop bioreactors in their homes. These are personal algae farms for growing nutrient-dense algae like spirulina or chlorella. In the world of genetic engineering, biofood containers are self-replenishing. Made from living organisms, they regenerate microfoods directly into the container. And then there are genetic DIY home kits, such as the Alchemist's Cookbook. Felix, an adventurous foodie, slices into a tomato from his indoor kitchen garden. He has used gene editing to infuse it with a unique blend of spices at the genetic level. For dessert, he will pick from his kitchen mini greenhouse a mini watermelon with the combined flavor of a lime. Flora, a graphic designer, marvels at the bioluminescent glowing salad greens she has grown in her kitchen garden. But not everyone is happy to be eating food from these large corporations that try and control everything. Some people hide because certain countries do not want their people growing their own food with fears of contaminating food that is regulated. And the mega corporations who have patents restrict everyday people from growing food themselves. News channels make sure the public remembers this by showing what happens when people eat unregulated food. They report on stories of people showing up in emergency rooms with never-before-seen symptoms. In basements and in camouflaged shipping containers, rebels build DIY greenhouses. These are the plant punks. Automated mushroom farms are built in basements. Rooftops host aquaponic systems for small-scale fish farming. Edible insect farms are built inside abandoned buildings, harvesting mealworms and crickets. Some insect farmers work on genetic modifications to change the taste, making them more palatable to those not used to eating insects. Cities have banned these insect farms, seeing them as pests that spread diseases. These plant punks have hacked together parts for banned rainwater harvesting, and they build sunlight reflectors, mirrors, hidden on buildings, disguised as windows, to reflect sunlight into shaded areas and down into basement skylights. They genetically modify plants to have root systems that grow vertically. By manipulating the genes controlling root development, tomatoes, lettuce, sweet potato, corn, and herbs are modified to grow roots in narrow, compact, vertical structures. These crops grow along walls and in narrow tubes, ideal for city environments with limited horizontal space. In some cities, there are large groups of cyberpunk farmers. Together, they run blockchain black markets. The biggest one is called Neon Bazaar. It runs on the dark Delhi coin that is backed by the value of the underground grown crops. 
This decentralized market allows cyberpunk farmers to trade their rooftop and basement-grown produce for other resources, all under the radar of the city's surveillance state. Drone drops are made at night to avoid detection. Other black markets work as non-profits, making sure there is a fair distribution of grown food in the community, distributing their organic harvest to those the city has forgotten. A group of outcasted botanist engineers create SeedSwap, a blockchain platform for trading rare and genetically modified seeds, seeds that are fast-growing food crops resistant to disease. This black market seed exchange becomes a lifeline for covert urban farms across the city. Seeds that have been engineered and patented by corporations begin to appear on the seed swap market. An AI hacker known only as Green Thumb is reverse engineering corporate patented seeds and eliminating the genetic code that requires fertilizer and nutrients made only by the corporation. Green Thumb circulates through the undernet releasing these trade secrets. Will people hold on to their food sovereignty or will corporations control everything? Will humans in the future still care about naturally grown food from Mother Nature's kitchen? Or will they get used to laboratory precision, genetically engineered crops, food tailored to their every desire?